Hello there, I'm Black Light, broadcasting out of the UK, into your homes, onto your phones, into your space. Welcome to my channel. First time you are passing by, then you can hit the thumbs up, the thumbs down, you can share, you can subscribe, you can mingle with my many subscribers, or you can become a subscriber yourself. But anyway, I wanted to elaborate a bit on the coronavirus bill. It is extremely important. Um, this video was inspired by TD, TDLR. They're really, really informative. So it was inspired by them. But I just felt as though I needed to share with you the intricacies of the new bill so that you are totally aware of what to expect. And it is very, very tricky. So there are three core parts to the bill, the medical powers. That's to do with the emergency registration of health professionals. Um, so they'll be able, they'll be qualified to give vaccinations at some point. Um, also, um, emergency registration for health professionals. Um, registrars of Social Care England and the Registrar of Social Care Wales have temporary powers to, to register social workers. There's powers, powers are being given to temporary, temporarily register those in the pharmaceutical industry. This is in preparation of the government plan to bring in students and retired doctors in order to cope with the strain. So there will be a special exemption if retired doctors do return to work and it will not affect their pensions. Um, there's also an indemnity coverage. Do you know ordinarily if a NHS practitioner is negligent, you could sue them for negligence. Under the coronavirus um, crisis, you can't sue them. If they do anything wrong, you can't sue them. Number one, they're under pressure. Number two, they've got limited resources and they have to make choices. And you might think, oh, you know, it's my grandmother. Um, you should have tried to keep her alive. She's in ICU, blah, blah, blah. And they are being protected because they have to make very, very um, serious decisions during this pandemic. So they are covered. So you can't go suing the NHS because you don't like the decision they've made. Um, let me see, they've got some tough decisions. Okay, so doctors have to have the power to make this decision without fear of legal consequences. Um, apparently, um, the authorities will be able to ask private companies like mortuaries and cemeteries information about their dead so as to effectively manage the transportation storage and disposal of dead bodies but i don't know if they mean unclaimed dead bodies i would assume they mean unclaimed dead, dead bodies and human remains so that directions can be made to enable changes in the death management system where there is or likely to be insufficient capacity in an area as a result of excess deaths from COVID-19. The, um, the bill estimates that in a worst case scenario, 80% of the population would be infected. That's not 80% will die, but will be infected. And so this is why they need more powers. This is what the new powers are in anticipation of. Then we have national security. This is the one that is a bit, should I say, made me feel a little bit uncomfortable, to put it mildly. Currently under the Investigatory Powers Act 2016, any urgent warrants needed to be approved by a judicial commissioner within three days. The new bill allows for additional judicial appointments to increase the number of available judicial commissioners. And it allows, this is the scary bit, it allows for warrants to be ex post facto. Approved within 12 days and extends warrants for 12 days. So what does ex post facto mean, you might ask? 
Well, it means after the fact, i.e. Um, with retrospective action or force. The new laws ordinarily cannot apply to people operating before the new law was passed. So ordinarily, if um, you've done something wrong, and then um, before a new law was passed, and then they pass a new law, even though what you did wrong was before the new law that was passed, they can go, they can still do you for it. That's ba that's what it is in basic English. You can be done for things that were legal before the new law came out. And when the new law come out, it's now illegal and you can be done for it. So what it what it does is that it can make an act illegal even though it was legal when the act was committed. Now that is scary. It also increases the penalties for infraction after it has been committed or changes the rules of evidence to make convictions easier. The Constitution prohibits the making of ex facto law, but it's been done all the same. So, this means the police can issue a warrant to do whatever the warrant allows before the police get approval from the judicial commissioner. So warrants uh, allow the police or the army to do anything. There are warrant, information warrants, there are arrest warrants, search warrants, monitoring warrants. The bill also expands on the Health Protection Coronavirus Regulations 2020 bill, which came into force in February to allow for the detention, isolation and screening of and other appropriate restrictions. We don't know what those appropriate restrictions are to be imposed upon persons who may have the coronavirus or who have arrived in England from an area in which the virus is prevalent. This means that the police, immigration officers and public health officials will have the power to detain people if they think they might be infected. Well, if the bill is assuming that 80% of the population is going to be infected, that means almost everybody except probably for the 20% top elite. So literally, the police have a warrant to stop you, detain you, and just for the hell of it, really. If they're bored or if they ain't got nothing better to do, and they feel, oh yeah, let's go out and see who's on the street, and you just happen to be on the street that particular day. You might have a legitimate reason. You may not. You might just be going for a walk. Remember, the, the laws that they make are discretionary. Or should I? Yeah, they're discretionary. They're, they're up to, they're more or less at the discretion of the officer who stops you. Because what Boris Johnson says about people walking and, um, you know, people going to the pub and, well, you're not allowed to walk for more than an hour or you're not allowed to, um, since it's lockdown then. You, I mean, you more or less know what he said. I haven't got it on the top of my head. But what Boris is saying and what it's saying in the bill is two different things. The bill doesn't give any restrictions. It doesn't give restrictions that you can only go out for an hour. It doesn't give a restriction to say you can only get essential foods. It just, it just outlines rules and regulations, but it's not specific. Like how Boris Johnson made it look. So that tells me that there's going to be one rule for one and another rule for another. Now, for those who um, breach Boris Johnson's law, 
they can be picked up and they can be done anything they want with. But if they choose, they can actually choose the wording of the bill for those who they want to choose it for. The two of them are not consistent. What Boris is saying is not consistent with what is in the bill. That's what I'm trying to say. So the bill gives the government power to shut down events, gatherings at private premises, if the public health situation deems it necessary. So um, the business aid statute, this is the third element, this is the third part of the bill. So the first part was... Medical, the second part was national security, and this part is business aid, and that includes statutory sick pay. Normally, SSP statutory sick pay kicks in after three days and has a maximum of 28 weeks, but under the coronavirus plan, it kicks in immediately. Um, it promises a rebate for businesses that are forced to pay more sick pay over the coronavirus 19 outbreak. It creates a new type of leave called emergency volunteer leave. This applies if the staff wants to take time off work to help their community deal with a crisis without losing their job. I think it's like the job retention scheme. The bill promises to compensate volunteers for some, some loss of earnings where relevant and for travelling and subsistence. The provisions of the bill expires after two years, but they can be suspended and reactivated at will. Um, there were some members of parliament that were trying to get it. Instead of it lasting for two years, people being um, un basically under house arrest for two, you know, at, at the um, state's will, um, they're trying to get it reduced to six months. But I don't know how that's going. The bill was fast-tracked through Parliament with limited parliamentary scrutiny and it has been agreed for all four UK governments and gives them the power to fight the virus with everything they have. The bill gives unprecedented powers to the state to enforce isolation of people who have committed no crime. The first time in history, apparently. So members of Parliament, like I said, have requested the Secretary of State to reassure the House that this House will be fully involved in reviewing this once the crisis is over. So what they're hoping is that once the crisis is over, everything is going to be resumed to normal. We're not going to be a straight state run um, city where everybody is in lock is locked up, even though they're not criminals. And yeah, so those were the three key elements of the Corona virus bill, and I hope you found it useful. I think the main thing to understand from that, in summary, is number one, you can't sue the NHS if they make a mistake or if a family member dies during this crisis. They're under-resourced, they're tired apparently, they can make mistakes and they have to make tough choices. Under the um, national security, the police can pick you up from wherever you are and do whatever they like. Basically, that's in a nutshell. You don't, you don't have to have any, you don't have to have done anything wrong. All they need to do is suspect that you have the virus and they can take you off and do whatever they want. Detain you, keep you in isolation, quarantine, whatever. So I did say this in a video a couple of weeks ago. I didn't even know about this at the time. I must be kind of psychic. But like we're saying, keep your butt at home. If you don't, you suffer the consequences. And then that third one, which was the business aid, um, basically, um, I don't know, that's just statutory sick pay. And the fact that, um, you know, that bill to detain and isolate has gone through Parliament and it's lasting two years. So for two years, the police are going to have power to do whatever they want. You don't have to do anything wrong. They just have to suspect you've got the virus. And 
If they're saying they suspect that 80% of the population has the virus, that means it's everybody. So that's all for now. Bye-bye.